to start. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Amma ba'd. Alhamdulillah. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to do some muraja'ah, a review of the previous lessons we've took. Right, humble love, we're studying the book for two weeks now. And we had a lot of uh, concepts and vocabulary and you know, it's a lot of things in general. So, Bibli Allah would like to review some of that material in order to prepare for our test, our open book uh, test exam tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. So, we want to begin with, excuse me, going over every page in Medina book over again. So, let's begin with page number five. Okay, at darsul awwal, the first lesson. At darsul awwal, everyone. At darsul awwal. In this lesson, the author introduces the word hava. Hava. No, and by now we know that hava means this. Or this is. Okay? And when you add a noun after it with, with uh, tenween, for example, baytun, hadha baytun, the meaning becomes this is a house. Hadha masjidun, this is a mosque. Hadha babun, this is a door. Okay, have a kitabun, this is a book. Have a qalamun, this is a pen. Have a miftahun, this is a key. Have a maktabun, this is a table. Have a sarirun, this is a bed. Have a kursiyun, this is a chair. Alright, so that's page number five. Very simple, straightforward, doesn't need a lot of explanation, just requires a lot of practice. Let's move on to page number six. Now, page number six adds something to Hadha. And that word is ma. So, ma, which means what? Ma Hadha. Ma Hadha. It means what is this? Okay, mahada. What is this? Okay, and then the author also introduces the hamza, hamza. Right, I have a, I have a, um, and whatever word you want to use. I have a baitun. Is this a bait? A home? But I have. I mean, is this a? And whatever word you want to fill in the blank with. Okay? So, ma hadha, ma, what is this? Hadha baytun, this is a bait, a home, a home, or a house. A hadha baytun, is this a house? Naam, yes, hadha baytun, this is a house. Ma hadha, what is this? Hadha qamisun, this is a shirt. A hadha sarirun, is this a bed? لا هذا كرسي no this is a chair هذا مفتاح is this a key لا no هذا قلم this is a pen ما هذا what is this هذا نجم this is a star okay so that's pretty straightforward as well uh, let's move on to the next page page number seven we have here Tamreen, everyone Tamreen, which means exercise, Tamreen. Now we have here um, questions on the right hand side, and on the left hand side is a pi are pictures, which you have to respond to. So the question asks, Mahada, what is this? You have to respond, Hada Miftahun, Hada Kitabun, Hada Qalamun, Hada Babun, Hada Baytun, right? Hada Kursiyun. 
So alhamdulillah, this is very easy. Now I'm just something that's very, very easy. Alhamdulillah. And we all should understand by now. Okay, on the next page we have Tamreen, the second exercise. Okay. And here the author, he asks the question, same concept, but with Ahadha. Now, so the questions, it reads, Ahadha Baytun. You look at the picture and you respond. If it's Nam, you say Nam. Hadha Baytun. Yes, this is a house. If it's La, no, then you say La, and then you mention what the picture is. So for the first example we have here, Ahadha Baytun. Right, we look at the picture. It's not a house, but rather it's a mosque, a masjid. Therefore, you're going to say, لا هذا مسجد. هذا مفتاح. Is this a pen? You look at the picture. No, you see that it's a pen. I mean, is this a key, right? The question asks, is this a key? You look at the picture and you realize, no, it's a pen. So you say, لا هذا قلم. لا هذا قلم. Okay? Then the third one, Ahadha Qamisun, is this a, sh a shirt? You look at the picture, it looks like a shirt, so you say, Naam, Hadha Qamisun. Ahadha Najmun, is this a star? Likewise, you look at the picture, and if it's a star, yes, it is a star, so you say, Naam, Hadha Najmun. Yes, this is a star. Okay? So let's move on to the next page, page number nine. The third exercise, okay, the third exercise. The author, he says, Iqra waktu, to read and write. So these are sentences in which you should read out loud. Hadha maktabun, hadha masjidun, hadha qalamun, hadha sarirun, ma hadha, hadha kursiyun, ahadha baytun, la hadha masjidun, ma hadha, hadha miftahun. Okay? Now this is a quick review. Right, we did all this in class already. We're just reviewing right now. All right. Um, we have the question, a new concept. Men have a men have a now men have a. It's right over here. Men have a means what? Who is this? Who is this? All right, used for human beings. <laughs> Naam. So, man hadha, who is this? Hadha tabibun, this is a doctor. Man hadha, who is this? This is a boy. Hadha waladun. Man hadha, who is this? Hadha talibun, this is a student. Ahadha waladun, is this a boy? La hadha rajulun. No, this is a man. Okay? So that's page number nine. Like Sanam. Alright, moving on to page number ten. We have questions here. Ma hava. What is this? Hava masjidun. This is a masjid. Men hava. Who is this? Hava tajirun. This is a merchant. Hava kelbun. This is a dog. Ahava kelbun. Is this a dog? لا هذا قط No, this is a cat. هذا حمار This is a donkey. هذا حمار Is this a donkey? لا هذا حصان No, this is a horse. وما هذا And what is this? هذا جمل This is a camel. جمل All right. Pretty straightforward. We have here أهذا and we also have the usage of mahava and manhava. So right now the author is combining between the three things we learned, between mahava, manhava, and ahava. All right. On the next page we have on page number eleven, the author continues with more exercises. We have here mahava. What is this? Hava dikun. This is a rooster. Manhava. Who is this? Hadha mudarrisun, this is a teacher. Ahadha qamisun, is this a shirt? La hadha mindilun, no, this is a handkerchief. Okay? Once again, pretty straightforward. Um, we go on to the tamreen, the exercise. Iqra waktub, read and write. 
So these 10 sentences, you do out, you, you read it and you write it out. We did this in class, now I'm going to do this for homework. So we don't have to, uh, let's go on to the second chapter. Now this is just a review, now this is just a review. Most of the stuff, we, we went over everything so far. Uh, on the second lesson, a dose with Fanny, on page number 12, the author introduces something new. Right? So we have here, ذَلِكَ ذَلِكَ Right over here, ذَلِكَ Now, هَذَا means this. ذَلِكَ means that. Alright? So we have here, مَا ذَلِكَ Right? Ma, what do we say ma meant? What? Alright, so we put ma valika. This means? What is that? What is that? Okay? Valika najmun, that is a star. Hada masjidun, this is a masjid. Wa valika baytun, and that is a home. Hada hisanun, this is a horse. Wa dhalika himarun, and that is a donkey. Now we have a dhalika. A dhalika, likewise with a hada. A means, is this? A question being asked, okay? So a dhalika means what? Is that. Is that, good. Is that a dot dot dot? Question being asked now. Adalika kalbun means is that a dog? La dalika kutun. No, that is a cat. Ma dalika, what is that? Dalika sarirun. That is a chair. Or, I'm sorry, bed. bed. Sarirun. Alright, let's move on to the next page, page number 13. Men hava wa men dhalika. Men hava wa men dhalika. Who is this and who is that? Alright. Then we have hava mudarrisun wa dhalika imamun. This is a teacher and that is a leader or imam. Okay. Ma dhalika. What is that? Dhalika hajarun. That is a, uh, a rock. Hava sukkarun wa dhalika labanun. This is sugar and that is milk. All right, then on, at the bottom we have here Iqra Waktub, some exercises, okay? Let's move on to, to chapter number three, next page, page 14. Ad-Darsu al ad okay? Now, for this chapter, the author, he introduces the concept of nouns e either being Fathatayn, I mean, sorry, Tanween, having tanween, or alif lam. All right. So when a word has tanween, two dhammas, what is the meaning? It has two dhammas. Yeah. A. It means a, right? Good. A. But when a word has alif lam, the. it means the. the. All right. So let's write some examples here. So we have here, for example, how do you, how do you say a boy? Wala dun. A boy. No? Wala dun. But how do you say the boy? Al wala du. Good. Alright. Any questions regarding this? No? If there's any questions, please let us know. Okay? And a word cannot have both. Moving on, we have here. Let's take some more examples. We have here some examples here on, on the third chapter. Baytun means a house. Al Baytu. Al Baytu means the house. Kitabun, it means a book. Al Kitabu. Al Kitabu means the book. Qalamun means a pen. Al Qalamu means the pen. All right. Jamalun means a camel. Good. Al Jamalu means the camel. Good. All right. 
So that's that concept right there. As a flamington wing. Now moving on. In the same chapter with the pictures, the author teaches us how to create a sentence in Arabic, a nominal sentence, a sentence in Arabic, right? When you're saying, for example, the boy is good, or the chair is small, or the table is big, right? That is. He teaches us how to create it. So we mentioned on many occasions that in order to create a nominal sentence, there are three rules. First, you need two nouns. Okay? Right over here. How to create a sentence. The first rule is what? Two nouns. We need two nouns. Second rule, the first noun must have alif and lam. Al. Okay? And the third rule is that the second noun must have ten wing. Alright? So example. We want to say the boy is big. Good. Al waladu kabir. Kabir. Okay, the boy is big. And this is how you create a nominal sentence in an easy, short, simplified, simplified way. You need two nouns, first noun, out of lamb, second noun, ten week. Alright? If there's any questions on that, please let us know. Any questions? Simple, easy? Okay, good. So we have examples here. Al qalamu maksurun, the pen is broken. Al babu maftuhun, the door is open. Al waladu jalisun, the boy is sitting. Good, sitting. Wal mudarrisu waqifun, the teacher is standing. And the teacher is standing. Good. Al kitabu jadidun, the book is new. Wal qalamu qadimun, and the pen is old. Good. Al himaru sagirun, the donkey is small. Wal hisanu kabirun, and the horse is big. Good. Al kursiyu maksurun, the chair is broken. Good. Al mendilu wasikun. The handkerchief is dirty. The handkerchief is dirty. Good. Al ma'u baridun. The water is uh, cold. The water is cold. Good. Al qamaru jamal jamilun. The moon is beautiful. The moon is beautiful. Good. Al baytu qaribun. The house is near. The house is near. Wal masjidu baridun. And the masjid is far. And the masjid is far. Good. Al hajru thaqilun. The rock is heavy. The rock is heavy. Wal waraqu khafifun. And the paper is light. Good. Al labnu The milk is cold. The milk is hot. Hot. Good. Al qamisu And the shirt is clean. And the shirt is clean. Good. All right. Move on to the next page. And this is a quick review because we should know this stuff. Um, we're just doing the exercises uh, just to re remind ourselves. Okay. So we have here al masjidun, al masjidu, al ma'u ma'un, al baytu babun, qalamun, al qalamu. Al Kalbu Kalbun Kamisun Waladun Al Hajaru Al Waladu Himarun Al Himaru Al Hisanu Hisanun. Okay? Here the author is just trying to um, reinforce the concept of a word having Alif Lam or Tanween. Can can a word have both Alif Lam and Tanween? No. No, never. Alright? Good. Alright, uh, let's skip to page Number Okay, we're gonna skip all the way to page number nineteen. Page number nineteen. Okay? Okay, everything else is, is regarding nominal sen um sentences in Arabic, okay? Page number nineteen, the author 
is teaching us the difference between sun letters and moon letters, okay? Sun letters and moon letters. Huruf al qamariya and huruf al shamsiya. Alright? We have sun letters and we have moon letters. Good. So, what's a sun letter and what's a moon letter? Good. No. Good. So, you're going to pronounce. Good. Pronounce. Alif and Lam. Al. While well, sun letter. You're going to put the pronoun. You're going to do it. Lam is going to be silent. Good. Lam is silent. And you're going to pronounce the, the alphabet. And you merge. Right? And you merge. Uh, what? The Alif. Hamza with the. Uh, Hamza with. The letter. The. Sun letter. Good. Okay? So, a sun letter is when the lamb is silent and you merge the hamza with the sun letter. Okay? While a moon letter, you pronounce the alif lamb. So, let's give some examples. A moon letter, give me an example. Al babu. Al babu. Al babu. Notice that we say al naam. So, what about sun letter? Give me an example. Athobu. Good. We're merging the Hamza with the sun letter, which is Fa. Athobu. Athobu. Alright? So, this here, the author is teaching us on page number 19 all of the sun letters and all of the moon letters. Okay? Moving on. Let's go to page number 21. Page number 21, the author, he is introducing the concept of prepositions. Okay, prepositions, or harf. All right. Like, for example, fi, ala, min, ila. Ma ma'na fi? In. Ma ma'na min? From. From. ما معنى إلى to ما معنى ب with and ما معنى على upon or on good these are prepositions what do prepositions do to a noun that comes after it they change it to uh, it changes the noun to a what either kasra or something to a kasra or kasra tay so we have here some examples. We have our al baytu, right? This is before the preposition enters the word al baytu, right? Mm -hmm. Now we have the preposition coming after it fil bayti. Now do you guys see the difference? Mm -hmm. Al baytu fil bayti. Okay. Al masjidu, the masjid fil masjidi. The preposition is changing the word, right? So fil masjidi means what? In the masjid. In the masjid. Al masjidu means what? The masjid. The masjid, okay? Al baytu means? The house. But when we enter fi into it, it means? In the house. In the house, okay? Then we have al maktabu, everyone? Al maktabu? Al maktabu. And then we have al al maktabi. Al al maktabi. So what does al maktabu mean? The, 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 the desk. The desk, good. And then al al maktabi means? On the on the desk. As-sariru. The bed. Good, the bed. And then ala sariri On the bed. On the bed. Alright? So prepositions, okay? Very simple, alhamdulillah. In the next set of um, portion, the ba, in parentheses, uh, the author is introducing a couple new things, right? So aina, ma ma'na aina? Where is. Where or where is, okay? So we ask them the question, where is so and so? Aina Muhammadun. Alright? Aina Yasirun. Aina Aminatu. Aina al Kitabu. Where is the the book? Wa Aina Sa'atu. And where is the watch? Sa'a means watch or clock. Alright? And on the left hand side are the responses to these questions. We have a huwa. 
هو في الغرفة ما معنى هو في الغرفة he is in the room, It, is in the room. good محمد he هو is in the room alright we have here the introduction of pronouns نعم pronouns so هو means he alright or it can also mean it right if it's referring to an inanimate object so هو في الغرفة T why do we say غرفة T and not غرفة تو or تا It changes the, um, Because we have a preposition that comes before it, all right? That changes it to kesra, perfect, which is fi, all right? Then we also have the pronoun hia. Me ma'na hia? She or it. She or it, all right? Same concept as huwa. Any questions regarding that? Okay. So let's move on to page number... 23. Page number 23. All right. And if there's any questions online, then please write in the comment section. Uh, what page are we on? We're on page number 23 now. Okay. We're on page number 23. Now, page number 23, where the Hamza is, the Hamza and the Aleph, you guys see it in parentheses? We have two columns. On the left hand, on the right hand side, we have male names, and on the left hand side, we have female names. Naam? So, what did we say is the difference between male names and female names? Male names and tenween. <coughs> Good. Male names always have tenween. So, for example, you have Muhammad, Dun, Khali, Dun, Hami. Done, all right? As opposed to female names, which? They end in, uh, end in only one dhamma, all right? They only end with one dhamma. Notice we say Amina, two. two. Zaina, bu. Fatima, two. two. Maria, mu. Okay? To the end. Any questions regarding that? Simple, straightforward, right? Okay. Moving on, let's go to page number, the next page. We have here page number what? 24. 24. Page number 24. Alright. The author, he introduces min and ila. Min and ila. Min means? From. So min al-bayti means? From the house. Ila al-bayti? To the house. To the house, alright. Here we learn in the conversation between Mudarris and Mudarris and Muhammad how to ask where are you from. So how do you ask where are you from? <laughs> Min Aina Anta or Ant. Right? Where are you from? How do you respond? Ana, Ana min, Ana wherever you're from, right? So Ana min Asini, I'm from China, or Ana min America, I'm from America, Ana min Pakistan, I'm from Pakistan, etc. Ana min al Hindi, I'm from Hind India. India. Good. Okay. So Ana is another pronoun. Ana is another pronoun, just like Hua and Hia. Okay. We also learn how to use verbs, right? Or we, we're introduced to verbs. But we mentioned that we're not going to explain it in detail because it's going to come in book number two, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so what, is the two, what are two verbs that we know? Kharaja, which means? He left. He left, good. And? Dahaba, which means? Uh, he went. He went, good. All right, let's go on to page number. Can I ask you a question? No. How do you say she left? I know I had, but. Okay, she left. Okay, so, so to say she left, because today's review, we're not taking anything new. We'll give it to you. So, Khwaraja means he left, no? To say she for a verb, you take the verb, you write it out, Khwaraja. 
And on the last letter, here, what letter is this? G. G, right? You're going to add something. Add a ta with a sukun. Ta with a sukun. So you say kharajat. Kharajat. Right? Dhahaba becomes the ha what? The habat. So the at the the ta sound. That's how you say she in, in a verb for in Arabic, okay? Alright. So let's move on to page number. So it's the same concept. Um, let's go on to the fifth lesson. The fifth lesson. Page number 27. Page number 27. Okay, the pages that we skipped, it's the same thing. Alright? Page number 27, the fifth lesson, we're learning something new. Okay? We learn a lot of things which are new. First, we're learning about possession and possessor. Possession and possessor, right? When you're saying book of Muhammad or Muhammad's book, pen of Zayd or Zayd's pen, door of the masjid or the masjid's door, okay? So how do we formulate a possession or possessive phrase? Possession and possessor. We need two nouns, yes? The first noun must be what? And then, um, start with the, the first noun must be the possession, remember? Good, so whatever is being possessed has to be the first noun. So let's say Muhammad's book. We have Kitab, kitab right? Kitab always has to come first. Then the second word has to be the possessor, so Muhammad. Right? Muhammad. Alright? Muhammad. Now we said that the possession must always, always, always have what? Uh, possession. One Dhamma. Remember? Kitabu. Naam? And then the possessor must always, always, always have what? One or two ten um kesaras, okay? One or two kesaras. Because Muhammad has no alifalam, it's gonna have ten ween, okay? Two kesaras. So kitabu Muhammadin. Alright? You want me to explain this in detail? Expound on this? Alright, so another example we have. Let's say messenger of Allah. Messenger of Allah. Which word comes first? Allah or messenger? Messenger. messenger. So how do you say messenger in Arabic? Rasul. So this is the first word, okay? Now we want to say, what comes next? The possessor. Who is? Allah. 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 Jalala. Okay? Now, the possession, the first word, has to have what? Uh, one dhamma. One dhamma. Good. One dhamma. Perfect. While the possessor, the second word, has to have? One kasura or two kasura, depending on if it has alif lam or not. Allah is an alif lam in Allah, therefore it's only one kasura. Okay? And this is how you make a possession and possess or a possessive phrase. Okay, this is how you make a possessive phrase. Alright? The, the word of. So we also learn how to use the harf nida or the particle of calling. How do we call somebody? If you want to grab someone's attention, how do we how do we use it? Yeah. We say yeah, right? We hear a lot of times in the Quran, yeah, ayu ladina amanu. Okay, all you who believe. Okay. So yeah is a particle of calling, and it means what? Oh, or you know. Anything to draw someone's attention. Nam. We also, um, the author here also uh, introduces the concept of adverbs. Nam. Adverbs. So what are some adverbs that we have? 
or dharf in Arabic, adverbs. We gave four adverbs now. What's one adverb? Tahta. 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 Tahta means what? Uh, below. Below, underneath. Good. Then we have? Uh, uh, Fouka before. Fouka. Fouka, above. Above. Good. Tahta meaning below, Fouka meaning above. Then we have, now we have Ba'da, which means? After. After, good. And we have? Qabla, which means? Before. Before, good. Alright, so these are adverbs. Now, what do adverbs um, resemble? Like, what, what do they resemble? They work the same way as a preposition. Why do we say that? Because when an adverb become, comes before a noun, what does it do to the noun? It changes it into one or two kesoras. Okay? It changes it into one or two kesoras. So here we have, like in the story, where Ali speaks, the last sentence in the story. Ali says, Hiya tahtal maktabi. Hiya tahtal maktabi. It is below the table, referring to the bag, the haqibah. Because Saeed asked, Aina haqibatul mudarrisi? Where is the bag of the teacher? Ali responded, Here it is, tahtal maktabi, underneath the table. Good. Any questions? Okay. Let me check any questions on YouTube. No questions? Okay. Move on. So on page number 28, there are some more examples of how to create the possessive phrase. So we let's do it together really quickly just to make you know everything easier. We have a kitabun Muhammadun. We're given two nouns. We have to make it into a possession possessive or possessive phrase. Possession and possessor. Kitabun Muhammadun. So qalamun hamidun, we would say? Qalamu Hamidin, Hamid's pen. Baytun Abbasun. Baytu Abbasin. Abbas is home. Ghurfatun Aliyun. Ghurfatu Aliyun. Right? Ghurfatu Aliyun. Good. Ali's room. Good. Daftaru Saeedun. Daftaru Saeedin. Daftaru Saeedin. Good. Um, Saeed's notebook. Mindilun Yasirun. Mindilu Yasirin. I'm sorry. So Yasir's handkerchief. Alright, that's pretty simple now. So let's move on. Where do we stop? Like this was the end. Like this page was the end. Oh this page right here? Okay. Okay, let's see. So we didn't do page number thirty one? So on page number, at the bottom of page 28, and the whole entire page number 29, we have a lot of sentences, no? A lot of sentences. Now here, the author is going to take everything that we learned so far. So, for example, the prepositions, yes? Fi ala min ila. He's going to take the possessive phrase, kitab muhammadin. Rasulullah. He's going to take the adverbs, the nominal sentences, and mix all of them together. Okay, so now we're going to take everything we learned and make and mix it together. Okay, so let's start with um, which one you want to start with? Nominal sentence or possessive? Start from the middle. Huh? Start from the, the first question. First question. Okay, let's start from the first question. Work it down, right? Okay. So let's look at the first question and, and go down. We have 
Aina baytun mudarrisi. Aina baytun mudarrisi. That's pretty simple, right? Aina baytun mudarrisi. Ma ma'na aina baytun mudarrisi? Where is the teacher's house? Okay? Aina means where is? Baytun mudarrisi. This is a simple possessive phrase. The teacher's home. The teacher's house, right? Or house of the teacher. Huwa ba'idun. Huwa ba'idun. It is far, okay. So that's pretty simple. Now the second sentence, Al Quranu Kitabullahi is a little more complicated. Al Now, what do we have here? We have here Al Quranu. So, if we were to break it down first, right? Let's break this down. The original sentence would be Al Quranu Kitabun, right? Which means what? The Quran, yeah. the Quran is a book. Nam, the Quran is a book, right? This is a simple nominal sentence. Okay, easy. Nam, al waladu kabirun, al Quranu kabirun, alif lam, tanwin. First noun has alif lam. Second noun has tanwin. All right. However, the author he wants to. Use a possessive phrase, okay, to basically, you know, make it a little uh, harder, I guess you could say. All right, he wants to use a possessive phrase. So he wants to use it in the predicate space. So kitabun, all right, he wants to change it. So all he does is that he takes a, a, a possessive phrase, kitab Allahi, book of Allah, Allah's book, and he replaces it with kitab, all right. So he says, Al Quranu, right? And he takes the possessive phrase, Kitabullah, he puts it right here, that's it. That's it. He takes the possessive phrase and he replaces it where the predicate used to be. Alright? Simple now. Al Quran and Kitabullah. Another example of this would be like what? Let's say Al Al Babu Kabir. What does this mean? Al Babu Kabir? The door is. Big, okay. Now let's say I want to replace the predicate and put a possessive phrase. All I need to do is what? Bring down the subject. Al Babu. And what? What do we do here? We replace it with a possessive phrase. So what 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 does we, what do we want to put? Al Babu, let's say the, the, the door is um what? Let's use the words we know. Um, Muhammad's house, for example, right? You're trying, you get what I'm trying to say, right? Muhammad's house. So we write Muhammad's house or house of Muhammad, we write. How do we say Muhammad's house? So Bayt has to come first, right? Bayt to Muhammadin. Okay? Bayt to Muhammadin. So all you do, you replace Kabirun with Baytu Muhammadin. So you say Al Babu Baytu Muhammadin. All right. So this is a subject, and this is a. Now the predicate becomes two words instead of one word. Okay. But the subject remains the same. Remains the same. Okay. The predicates gets a little bigger. 
All right? That's basically it for that. And if you want to change it to, um, if you want to bring the, the, the Bitcoin and the predicate down, you would say pay to Muhammad and Babila. Exactly, yeah. So if you want to switch it now, right, you want to keep the predicate, but change the subject, you do the same exact thing. So for example, you take Baytul Muhammadin and put it in the subject area. And this is why we say subject predicate, because the subject predicate is going to change, but the concept remains the same. Okay? So Baytul Muhammadin. Right? This is the subject now. The predicate remains the same. Put Kabirun over here. Now the meaning, Baytul Muhammadin Kabirun. Muhammad's house is big. Okay? Here it means the door is Muhammad's house. Here, the, Muhammad's house is big. Alright? I think we went over that on Thursday or Friday, no? On Friday we explained it and we gave examples of it. And you guys have to do exercises. Alright? Third sentence, same thing, look, Al-Ka'ba to Baytullahi, right? Al-Ka'ba to Baytullahi. The Ka'ba is the house of Allah. Same thing here on the fourth sentence, Muhammadun, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? That could be in parentheses. Right? Draw parentheses around it, just so it makes it clear for you. Muhammadun, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullahi. Is the messenger of Allah. How do you say Muhammadun? Muhammad is a messenger? Muhammadun Rasulun, right? But to say Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, we need the possessive phrase. So we take Rasulullahi, messenger of Allah, and we put it where the predicate is supposed to be. So Muhammadun Rasulullahi. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Next sentence we have a verb, right? Kharaja. Kharaja. It's a verb. Um, we said we're not gonna explain it, but let's just look at the sentence here. Kharaja. Is it al mudarrisi al al mudarrisu al mudarrisa? Which one? All we know is al mudarrisu, right? We didn't learn about si or sa yet, right? So kharaja doesn't affect the verb. Does not affect a noun yet. Does not affect a noun. A, a, a noun right now. Okay? A verb does not affect a noun right now. So, al mudarrisu. Kharaja al mudarrisu. The teacher left. Okay? Because kharaja means he left. But who's the doer? We're given the doer in this sentence. Al mudarris. So, the mudarris left. Min. Mema'na min? From. From. Then we have here a possessive phrase. Okay? Let's, let's erase min, al mudarris, and kharaja. And we just take these two words, Ghurfa and Al Mudir. Ghurfa and Mudir. Let's take these two words. Mema na Ghurfa to Mudir. The Mudir's room. The Mudir's room, the principal's room. Good. Alright, so we will write, for example, Mudiri, no? Right? That's right, no? Mudiri. Okay? Now, let's say I take Ghorfa, right? Ghorfa tun. A room, yes? What if I put fee before it? It becomes? Fi Ghorfa. Fi Tin. Right? Let's take Al Mudir. Al Mudiru. Let's say I put a fee before it. It becomes Fil Mudi V, right? Now let's take fee and put it before this.
okay? Now the fi is supposed to change the, the words into kesra, right? But we said that the possessor always has kesra no matter what. Or can certain if there's no out of plan. Naam? So it can't change this. Therefore, what does it change? The possession, the, the one dhamma. It changes it to only one kesra now. Okay? One kesra. So we say, fi ghurfatil mudiri. So this is why we have here in this sentence, fi ghurfatil or min ghurfatil mudiri. Right? Min is also a harf preposition. So it works the same way as fee. Okay? Next sentence we have, is that simple, easy? Right? We went over examples, on, I think, on Friday too, right? Friday or maybe Thursday. We did examples of it. Right? Okay. The next sentence we have, هذا بيت حامد وذلك بيت خالد. Everyone? هذا بيت حامد وذلك بيت خالد. Good. This is the home of Hamid. Hamid, and that is the home of Khalid. Khalid, or Khalid's home, Hamid's home, and Khalid's home. Good. Ibn, ma ma'na Ibn? Son. Son. Good. But Ibn Ammar means Ammar, son. son, or son of Ammar. Good. So, son of Ammar, Talibun. Ma ma'na Talibun? Talibun, a student. Good. So Ibn Ammarin Talibun means the son of Ammar is a student. Is a student. Okay. So what changed? The subject. All right. Which which one's more advanced? Like or change? The subject or predicate? Ibn Ammarin Talibun. Talibun. Right. Al Waladu Kabirun. Talibun is same. Right. It's the predicate. It didn't change. What changed here? Ammarin. The subject, right? So Ibn Ammarin. Alright? You can say Al Ibn Talibun, right? Al Ibn Talibun. The son is a student. That's easy, right? But the author is making it more um, complicated. So Ibn Ammarin. Ammar's son is a student. Okay? Then we have here Wabnu, Wabnu, yes. which is basically Wa Ibnu. Mm -hmm. Okay? Wa Ibnu Yasirin Tajibun. Ma'na? Yasir is the son of the businessman. Good. Yasir's son is, the is a businessman. Good. Merchant or businessman. Good. Baytun Mudarrisu. Baytun Mudarrisi Ba'idun. Everyone? Ba'idun, good. What does that mean? Baytul Mudarrisi? The Mudarrisi's house. The teacher's house? The house is far. Is far, like Ba'idun, okay? What remains the same? What, what, which one's easy? The subject or predicate? The predicate. The predicate, right? It's the same. al waladu Kibirun, right? It's the same. Which is the harder one that changed? The subject. The subject, all right? Then we have here, Wa Baytul Tajiri Qaribun. Wa Baytul Tajiri Qaribun. Ma ma'na? The house of the merchant is near. Okay, and the house of the merchant is near. Ha ha the miftah ma ma'na? This is the key for the car to the car. Of the this car, the good. Of oh, the car's key, good. Very good. Aina miftah ul bayti. Where is the key for the house? Good. Where is the house keys? The house keys. The house's keys, right? Okay. Min or man anta ya wala. Do why is there only one dhamma? Because a ya, yeah, right? A ya yeah makes the uh, thing being called into one dhamma. So men and ya means? Uh, from, where, where is the oh boy? Where are you from? Good. Men and ya waladu. Oh boy, who are you? Oh. Men and right? Okay. Who are you? Very good. So ana. Ibn Abbasin. Ana Ibn Abbasin. Ma ma'na? I am the son of Abbas. I'm Ib good. I'm the son of Abbas. Or I am Abbas's son. Okay? But if you're going to pronounce it, you're not going to say Ana Ibn. You're going to say Anabnu. Anabnu. Because look at that Aleph right there. The Hamza. You skip it. It's a Hamza wasl. See that little sign on top? 
is a hamzatul wasl, meaning you skip it, you don't pronounce it. Okay? Then you have wa ibnu man huwa. Wa ibnu man huwa. Ma ma'na wa ibnu man huwa? Wa ibnu man huwa. And whose son are you? Who is? And whose son is he? Whose son is he? All right. So there's something new here. This is actually this is something new. So wa. I'm not sure if we should give something new today because tomorrow's a test. Should we give something new today? No. No. Okay. So we're not going to explain this until uh, on Wednesday, inshallah. Or maybe tomorrow if we have time after the test. Okay. Um, let's go on to the next sentence. We have here, Aina Mesjidu. Oh, this is harder. Okay, we're going to skip that too. <laughs> we're going to explain that tomorrow. Bin to Hamid and Fin Oh, that's a little harder as well. So we leave it here. Okay, we'll leave it right here, inshallah. Because now everything's going gonna to combine even more things now. All right, so today's, tomorrow's test, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be about everything we went over today. So just review today's lesson. If there's anything you need more explanation on, then go to the correct class in the previous lessons, or you send us a question, and we'll explain it all over again. All right? Any questions? Nope. So we'll end here. Any questions on YouTube? No questions? Okay. Subhanaka Allahumma ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.